This is video three of the SRPC COVID curriculum. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the nuances of the COVID-19 intubation. The contents of this video will be broken down into various stages of the intubation process. And you'll see this framework in this video and in later content. So we'll start with the indications for intubation. You've likely heard about the happy or the silent hypoxics. We're not quite sure why sometimes these patients are so hypoxic without showing any other clinical signs. I think the take home point in this regard is that the saturation is one piece of the puzzle but can be unreliable. So don't take the O2 saturation in isolation to gauge the need for intubation. It is hypothesized that COVID causes pleuritis of the lung, which causes the patient to breathe both in a rapid and shallow fashion. Because of this, again, increased rest rate is just one piece of the puzzle. You should look for other signs of increased work of breathing, such as accessory muscle use, which may be a bit more meaningful. Now, because these patients rapid rest rate, you would expect their VBG to show a decreased CO2. If your patient's pCO2 is elevated, that might be a sign that your patient's tiring and or there's something else going on. And finally, of course, as always, mental status is a big factor. Now let's talk about the preparation and the plan for intubation. Especially in the days of COVID, you need to have a dedicated plan A, B, and C decided before you walk into the room. This is gonna allow your team to collect the necessary equipment all in one go. You can take this a step further and make these into grab bags, which make this process more efficient. The overall recommendation is to use video laryngoscopy. The reason for this is because it allows you to stay further away from the patient's face and it allows for less movement of the intubator, which some may perceive as safer. At the end of the day though, your first line should be what is going to maximize your chance of first pass success. For your plans B and C, consider a supraglottic device with a mask with a hole in it and a viral filter, potential for a surgical airway, and bag mass ventilation in between your attempts. Now, to prepare your team for this, you should recognize that most of these patients will not be starting satting out at 100%. You should expect to sat in the 80s or 90s, even with proper pre-oxygenation. Because of this, you may experience a rapid desaturation when you paralyze the patient. This really isn't a teaching moment. The most experienced intubator should be intubating these patients. You need to prime your team for this desaturation to quell their anxiety. It's not unreasonable to just tell your team, I fully expect this patient to desat into the 60s and I might even lose the saturation. Remember that below 80%, O2 saturation monitors really don't work well. Previous videos have discussed pre oxygenation in detail. Your goal should be around 3 minutes of 100% FiO2. Positive pressure is often helpful. It's exceptionally important to optimize these patients from a physiologic standpoint. You should do what you're used to, but know that these patients will have profound apnea intolerance. So anything you can do to increase your safe apnea time is helpful. While IV fluids are commonly used as a response to low blood pressure, there is some thought that in COVID, excessive fluid use may worsen lung function. In addition, it's likely not going to help your blood pressure in the time frame that you're hoping for. Consider the positioning of the patient and consider starting vasopressive medications early. Having a push dose at bedside is good, but starting a drip before you intubate is more prophylactic as opposed to reactionary. Now, there are a few nuances of the apneic period in COVID patients. If paralysis is used, you should wait at least 60 seconds for confirmation of paralysis. Some video laryngoscopy monitors have timers on them that you can use, but the idea here is to avoid getting coughed on. Remember that when they become apneic, you may need to give them an aggressive jaw thrust to keep the airway open if you are using the protected CPAP approach discussed in the last video. In order to accomplish this, if you are using a non-invasive deposit pressure mask, you might need to switch to a regular cuff seal mask to allow you to do this well. Now, it's important to appreciate pulse ox lag. There are many contributing factors to pulse ox lag, such as vasoconstriction, hypothermia, and poor perfusion of the oximeter site. Take a look at this video. Look at the lag between the time when this perfectly healthy patient starts breathing and the saturation catching up. It takes about 25 seconds for his O2 saturation to go from 83 to 90%. We often abandon something that's actually working because of pulse ox lag. Recognize this lag. Avoid aggressive bagging, which is harmful and will cause stomach insufflation. If you are using the protected CPAP setup, you really only need to actually bag twice for full expansion of the lung. This is a situation where inline capnography is especially helpful because you can monitor the waveform and ensure a proper seal. Now a few key points about the post-intubation care of these patients. Once the endotracheal tube is in place, do not ventilate the patient until the endotracheal cuff is inflated and a viral filter is placed. Only at this point are you protected from the patient's exhalations. 
Observation in New York and Italy found that saturations often dropped after the patient was intubated and stayed low for a few hours post-intubation, even after appropriate physiologic optimization and an uneventful intubation. Your target O2 sat for these patients should be their pre-induction O2 saturation or higher. Now let's recap this video of the nuances of the COVID-19 intubation. Do not use the O2 saturation or the rest rate alone as indicators for intubation. You must take into account the full picture. Before you enter the room, talk about the plan with your team. Lay out plan A, B, C, and make sure all of the equipment you need is taken into the room with you when you first go in. You really can't afford to send a team member out of the room in the midst of a resuscitation for something that was forgotten. Think about checklists and grab bags to prevent this. Remember to prime your team for the inevitable hypoxia. This makes a huge change in the temperature of the room when the patient starts to desaturate. While it is important to physiologically optimize these patients, you will have very little time and these patients are very apneic intolerant. The name of the game is doing what you know. Remember to wait after you give paralysis so you don't get coughed on, and don't get overly excited with the desaturation. Remember pulse ox lag and gauge with chest rise and or inline capnography. When you've secured the endotracheal tube, remember that you must inflate the endotracheal cuff and put a viral filter on before you bag the patient. And finally, at the end of the day, your primary job is to keep your nerves with you when everybody is in PPE, hot and stressed. Good luck. This has been video three of four of the COVID-19 airway curriculum. Part four will wrap up the core content by covering the protected code blue.